It's Autodesk University 2009. We're here at the AEC Lounge, and my guest this time is Jason Reese. He is the Technology and Process Development Manager for Balfour BD Construction. Your company does a lot of work for the government sector. What do you say when a government project manager asks, why BIM? Uh, well, it's an interesting question, really, because the process of performing BIM on a project is really all about how you communicate and collaborate with designers and contractors and subcontractors. If, for instance, if the owner has certain requirements around certain BIM uh, process is being completed, then it forces the team into a more collaborative, integrated process. Right. And that's where we've aligned with Balfour Beatty, regardless of owner requirements, especially on our design build work. Well, we'll bring the team in early in the project and really sit down and hammer out what we're going to use BIM for, what are the deliverables, what are, the work, what are our workflows for using BIM, and then how are we going to develop information from designers to subcontractors in order to be able to make sure that those processes can be implemented later in the project. Project. And without that type of planning, then we're not going to be able to make use of the information for those tools. Uh, so if you go back to, you know, the owner asking why BIM, well, it's just a better product that you're getting. You're, you're spending the same money in order to get uh, a better, more collaborative team, uh, rather than maybe an adversarial relationship. Mm -hmm. When you work closer with designers and some contractors to really think about how things are being developed, and you know, I don't want to say really getting in each other's business, but working together to make to empower each other to do their job better, um, you really get a better product. So that's that's part one. Uh, it's just a better team you get for the project. Uh, part two, I would say, is that you know, as an owner, if you are requiring a certain level of detail. For for BIM, then you are going to be getting a information that you can potentially use down the road. And that requires even more upfront thought. And you start talking about uh, different initiatives like the Kobe initiative, where we're able to uh, actually develop information and pull all product data into a database that can then feed into facilities management software uh, and various other uh, programming databases that a lot of other vendors are starting to look at right now. And that's really kind of been the end promise of BIM that you know was being sold to owners you know, three, four years ago. So that's what that's what this information is going to be able to do for them. And uh, the reality is that no one's realized that benefit yet, because no one's really had the tools or the processes in place. And those are just starting to happen right now. So the why is that you're going to get a better product, and then you're also going to be able to use that for improving the maintenance of facilities. And the reality is that the maintenance and operations facilities are 80 percent of the cost of a life cycle of building whereas the design and construction is only 20 percent so really you need to get the most bang for your buck really at the end game of the project you know after it's done and after the contractor's gone home and there's also opportunity for integrating with the contractor design builder uh, during the O&M stage uh, can you maintain their services throughout you know the life of the operation maintenance to maintain and update data can you have a services contract contract with them in order to, you know, just be able to say, all right, well, I've moved this around, I've, I've renovated this area here, I just need to update my facilities model uh, and make sure my FM software is up to date with information. I don't quite know how to use a Revit or uh, Navisworks or other platforms. Uh, can you help me out? And it becomes a service that you provide. So there's an opportunity down the line to fully integrate the designer, contractor, and the owner throughout the life cycle of the project from, you know, concept inception all the way through the building's life cycle. Jason, one of the things I've been picking up from the construction professionals here at Autodesk University 2009 is comments about the BIM process being so good in terms of bringing the construction discipline team into the process earlier, into the design phase in some cases. Have you experienced that in your work? Oh, look at what I was saying earlier with the design, with the owners requiring BIM, you get a more integrated team, it's clear. Uh, but in order for us as contractors to benefit from the information we develop, we have to be into the designer's processes. We have to know how they're going to develop information. And, you know, the designers are going through a, you know, a paradigm shift right now with, instead of doing drafting with AutoCAD, just 2D lines, there, it's a different way of, you know, putting the design to a building. So they're going through this shift in de defining what their processes are. So they not only just want to define, you know, how they're going to do it, but they, a lot of them want to collaborate with contractors to say, 
if I'm going to set up a process and it's going to become my standard operating procedure, I'd like it to be so that I can deliver something that you're asking for, at least in a general sense, or at least the majority of contractors can deal with my information. What's important to the contracting community as I'm developing my processes? So by us being more involved and saying, we wish you, could, you know, the model would do this or do that, uh, you can really help them say, okay, well, I'll tweak my process here. So that makes sure that it's done and they can relay that down to their designers and to their BIM managers to make sure these things happen. One, some of the other benefits that we're seeing is not just on the design side, but on the subcontract side. For a group that has always worked for us, we're now uh, with the advent of programs like Navisworks, uh, the class detection process. Mm -hmm. We are now inserting ourselves into the development of submittal documents. Whereas it, previously, we were saying, okay, here's a schedule for you developing your submittals. They're due on this date, and that's when I want them. And all you can do is really call them and say, are you going to be delivering on time, or are you two weeks late, or you know, all of a sudden the date comes and the submittals aren't delivered on time. Now, by doing the class detection process, you insert yourself before the it's really complete, before it's for, finally coordinated and you really have a feel is my subcontractor maybe behind the eight ball a little bit did we try and bite off too much area at one time for this particular submittal can we scale down a bit so we can meet the schedule all that all the process of that's not communicated back to the contractors typically because the subcontractors are kind of operating in a silo now is being discussed and you start realizing hey there's a problem here let me adjust something and you can react to make the subcontractors lives really easier but you can also make sure that the subcontractors understand what the point to your plan is and what might be important, where they might need to focus their efforts better than we were able to before because we have a more collaborative tool to do it with. Jason, thanks again for taking time with us. No problem. Glad to do it.